Hello guys, welcome once again to our PIC assembly language programming video tutorials with Tibang Padi. Now on this tutorial we will be looking at ADC, analog to digital converter. And then I'll be using the PIC 16F818 for this example. Now the 16F818 has up to five pins capable of ADC. Those five pins are RA0, RA1, RA2, RA3, and RA4. Right. These pins can be used as analog pins for ADC purposes. Analog input pins for ADC purposes. And um, for our example, we just need one analog input. So I'm going to use the RA0 as the analog input. And now in the peak, although there are five pins capable of ADC. Internally in the peak, there's only one ADC module. There's only one ADC converter. So we need to now, by making use of instructions and registers, select which pin is connected to the ADC module. We perform ADC for that particular pin. And when we are done, if we have another pin, we select that pin, we perform ADC. So ADC is performed by one module, but we select which pin is the one selected and ADC is performed on that particular selected pin. We can select the channel. We call them the ADC input channel. These channels can be selected using the three least significant bits of your uh, channel select register or the ADCON0. We'll look at ADCON0 and how we can select. Now, looking at ADCON0, Actually, bit 3 to bit 5. These are the channel select registers, the bits on ADCON 0. So we say on ADCON 0, if those three bits, it's bit 3 to bit 5. If those three bits are 0, it means we have selected an analog on RA 0, which is analog 0. If they are 0, 0, 1, it's analog 1 up until analog for the but we want to always select channel 4 meaning bit 3 up to bit 5 of this ad con register will make them zeros when we configure our ad con register so that a analog input 0 is the one or it is a channel that is selected channel 0 is the one that is selected and that is where our analog input is going to be right so we're going to choose our a0 as our analog input we want to configure the rest of these pins as digitals because we're not going to use them we just need one analog channel and now when it comes to analogs besides having an analog input and then the adc module for you to successfully perform adc we need a reference a positive reference and a negative reference for adc now for 818 we can choose our vdd the very same supply voltage connected to the vdd to be our positive reference and then our vss the ground to be our negative reference then we won't need external references for adc but if we need to use external references adc we can use we can configure our positive external reference to be on ra3 and our negative external reference to be on ra2 there but for this case we are going to use our positive reference as VDD and our negative reference as VSS. How do we configure this? Our positive reference to VDD, negative to VSS, and then RA0S, the only analog input. We look at this ADCON1 register. The ADCON1 register is the one that we use to set up our pins as either analogs or digitals. So we have used ADCON1 previously where we used to move 0, 6 or 0, 7 0, 6 or 0, 7 where we disable all analogs right so if this if x is 0 then that's going to be 6 or if x is 1 that's going to be 7 when you move either 0, 6 or 0, 0, 7 to 80.1 we're actually configuring all the pins as digital pins but now we want only a0 to be an analog and the rest to be digital we have such a configuration yes it is here 
and then it is when we move e on the lower bits if that is e it means all of those four pins will be digital except the ra0 will be an analog and our positive reference will be vdd our negative reference will be vss that's what we want so if we move on the lower bit e into 80 con 1 we are going to have our a0 is analog positive reference as vdd negative reference as vss and the rest of the other pins as digital pins right but now that is for bit 0 to bit 3 what about bit 7 to bit 5 or to bit 4 actually bit 5 and 4 are always zeros because they are unused right let's look at bit 7 bit 7 says our adc results will be right justified if we make it one or will be left justified if we make it zero what does right justify mean what does left justify mean right now our adc results are a 10 bit value when we perform adc the results that we get is a 10 bit value right but now our peak is an 8 bit microcontroller all registers in it are 8 bits registers meaning they can hold a, a number of a maximum of 8 bits per register but if we have a 10 bit results how do we save it in 8 bit registers we actually make use of two registers one with 8 bits and then the other one with the remaining two bits right now those two registers are address h and address l right for right justify it means the 8 bits of address L are used as the lowest as the least significant bits and the two bits of address H are used as the two most significant bits when it is right justified we are using the whole of eight bits of address L and only two bits of address H lower bits of address H two of them to make the right justified left justified we are using all eight bits of the address H and only the two most significant bits of address L that is left justified so let's just look at it uh, at the bottom here how left justified is and how right justified is i said our results are 10 bit results so we have eight bits in one register and two other bits in the other register so if our results if our 10 bit results are right justified right justified we are using the whole 8 bits of the address L and two least significant bits of address H. The rest of address H bits are zeros. But bit 0 and bit 1 of address H are used to make the 10 bit, meaning these two bits plus the 8 bits. Right. That is right justified. Now, for left justified, it means we are using the whole bits, 8 bits of address H and only two significant bits of address right we use eight bits of address h and we use only the two most significant bits of address l meaning bit six and bit seven of address l as two bits and then the eight bits as in address h but for this uh, example i want us to use right justify right where our eight bits are in address l and then only two bits in address h the two lower bits of address h right so if we want to use right justified that bit 7 must be 1 so on our ad con one register bit 7 is going to be 1 right justified bit 6 at this stage let's not worry about clock division and, and and all of that we can either enable or disable it let me just say i'm going to disable it so that is going to be 1 0 and the two other bits are zeros so that is 8e so if i move 8e into ad con 1 i will have set my results to right justified and i've selected my only ra0 as analog input the rest as digital and for vdg as my positive reference vss as my negative reference let us quickly do that in the program let us do that in the program and now most importantly, to use any pin 
as an analog input pin. It must also be configured as an input. There's no way you want to use RA0 as an analog input pin, but you configure it as an output. I will have to configure this pin as an input, and then using AD.1, configure it as an analog input. Right. So let's do that in the program. I've created a simple program file where we can start writing our program on. As always, origin, the reset vector, 0, 0. And now we want to go to initialize. Go to initialize. I'm going to call it initialize. Right. So we want to go to initialize. Now at initialize, we want to go and set up our inputs and then set up the ADCON1 register. ADCON1 register also, by now we should know that it is in bank 1. So we are switching to bank 1. Bit set file status comma RP0. Now that we are in bank 1, we need to make sure that RA0 is an input. RA0 is an input. So I'm going to say move a return value into the room. Only RA0, the rest we can make them outputs. So I'm going to say in binary, bit 7 is 0, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, but 0 must be 1. So that value is the value that I want to move into this A by making A0 a 1. But now, what is this value in hexadecimal? What is that value in hexadecimal? 0x, the first three bits are zeros, so that's going to be 0, and then the other ones, it's 0, 0, 0, 1, that's a 1. So in hexadecimal, that is 0, 1. So move 0, 1 into W, move that into 3A. Here we are make only RA0 S input we were switching to bank one by setting status rp0 now that we're in bank one we can set up our ios and only a0 should be an input in this case you didn't say anything about this b so let me make them all outputs by clearing this b now Back to our value that must go to ADCON1. The value that must go to ADCON1, I said, bit 7 is going to be set. Bit 6, I'm going to disable the clock division. And then 5 and 4 are zeros. That gives us 1, 0, 0, 0. That is 8. And now, to configure the last 4 bits, to configure only A0 as analog, the rest as digital, and my positive and negative references there i need to put e so that is 8e in hexadecimal that must go into adcon 1 so we're going to do just that now we say now move literal value into w 8e move w to file adcon 1 that will have selected only that s analog input vdd and vss s adc references right <clears throat> now we need to select the channel. Remember, after we have configured this only RA0 as the analog input and setting up our positive and negative references, we still need to select that this channel is the one that is connected to the ADC converter. This channel that is on RA0. First channel. Channel 0 must be the one connected to ADC. How do we do that? We do that in the ADCON0 register. Now, uh, bit 6 and bit 7, 
are for the ADC conversion clock select bit. Let's assume that for now we want to use the internal ADC um, oscillator for that. We don't want to perform calculations, or and you assume that this frequency will be enough, will give enough duration for your ADC to give you correct results. I'm not going to go into calculations of the charge and discharge types. I just want to show you how to program and how to make use of ADC. Right. So I'm assuming that the clock which you will get from the internal RC of the ADC will be enough to, to accurately perform ADC on your channel. Right. So I'm going to use the internal. Bit 7 and bit 6 are going to be 1, 1. And now my channel is going to be 0, 0, 0. So I have 1, 1, 0, 0. That's a C. I have 0 for bit 3. Here, are, this bit 2 is when you initiate uh, ADC. I, I haven't started performing ADC. So I'm going to start by saying no ADC is in progress. I don't want any ADC in progress. So I'm making this 0. So that is 1, 1, 0, 0. 0 0 this bit is not used it's 0 but now i want to enable adc move so the adc must be switched on this bit must be one so i have one one zero 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 one that is c1 which i must put into adcon zero so now adcon zero is in bank zero I can do that while I'm in bank zero. I know AD con one is in bank zero, so I'm going to say bit clarify status comma RP zero. Then I can access AD con one in bank zero. Let me just make sure. Let me just make sure by going to memory organization, and then I look at. Not oscillator memory organization then i look at ad core do we get ad core this is okay ad core one registers the one ad core zero is in bank zero so i was right ad core zero is in bank zero now to access ad core zero we switch to bank zero first and now the value that we want to move into AD con zero, it is C one AD con zero. Now that's how easy it is to set up your analog digital. So here we enable ADC module, power it up. And then select channel zero. We are enabling ADC, and at the same time, we have selected channel zero as our input to that ADC module. Right now, we want to perform ADC. We want to perform ADC. Now, what's most important that you need to understand is how ADC works and what is the significance, what is the meaning. Of the results you get from the ADC. Let's look at this. Let's say you have, in this case, we have our analog A0S input. Analog A0S the input. So that is also input on port A0, RA0. Right. This is an analog input, our peak microcontroller ADC right now we are going to get a digital value out of it so this is our peak microphone right now when we perform adc on this channel we're going to get a 10 bit result a 10 bit result but now what is the significance of those results? What does those results mean? It goes back to our references. Now, if you have an analog input, 
and we have our negative reference as ground VSS, which is zero volts. And we have our positive reference as VDD. And I'm assuming that we are supplying our peak with five volts. So our positive reference is five volts. Our negative reference is zero volts. Right. Now, what it means is that the analog input can be any value, any voltage between zero and five. That analog input must not go below zero volts, it must never be a negative voltage, and it must not be greater than five volts. Now, because our results are a 10-bit result, if our ADC input is zero, the corresponding digital, so this will be our analog signal, which can range anything between zero and five volts. On the digital side, the value that corresponds to zero volts will be in digital value zero. Right. The value corresponding to five volts at with 10 bits, you can count up to 1023. Right. So a digital value representing five volts is 1023. A digital value representing zero volts it is a value zero so anything between will be represented by something between zero and 1023 uh, in digital there so now let's assume our analog input let's assume that while we are getting our analog input it happens to be varying so we have our analog and it's been varying up and down right it's been varying up and down. now at the moment the moment we perform adc our input there was say maybe 1.3 so the moment we perform adc our input is at 1.3 what will be the digital representation of that 1.3 volt? So when we perform ADC and in our input, it must be between the two references. It cannot be below, it cannot be above, right? So if it is 1.3, good, because it's between. But what is the digital representation of that 1.3? Remember, we perform ADC, the peak will automatically give you that result, and then those results will be in the address H and address L registers depending on whether you did right, justified, left, justified, you will decide how you deal with that number. But if our input voltage is 1.3 volts, our analog input is 1.3, when we convert it to digital, what will that value be? It's basically a cross multiplication. You will say um, 1023 is equivalent to 5 volts. What is equivalent to 1.3 volts? So basically to calculate it, you will say cross multiplication, 1023 divided by 5 volts, right, multiply by 1.3 volts. The digital value that will represent 1.3 volts, it is 266. We don't have decimal points in the peak. So that will be, I'm grounding it off, is going to be 266. A digital value 266 represents the analog input signal of 1.3. For 1.7, for, 1 for 2.1, what we have up until 5 volts, there's an equivalent digital value for that analog input. Basically, that's what we're going to do uh, when we perform ADC. We make use of references and then the possible value that, uh, that the possible maximum results we can get in this case is a 10 bit giving us 1023 from 0 to 1023 and then we scale that according to our references we scale it according to our references if we were using external references and our negative reference if we were using not vdd and vsss references if we were using external references on RA2 and RA3, and then we decide to say our negative reference is going to be 0 0.5 volts, 
and our positive reference has to be 3.3 volts let's say we decided to do it this way then it means digitally 0 will be for 0 0.5 volts and 1023 will be 1023 will be for 3.3 volts right and now 1.3 that 1.3 volts will mean something else on this side won't mean two double six anymore it won't mean 266 anymore it will mean something else right so basically for us we are going to stick to this and now i'm just showing you how are we mapping our negative reference to our digital value and our positive reference to our digital value and then how we can calculate the digital value of any analog input within the range of the minimum and maximum between the negative reference and the positive reference right so now let's get back to this one we want to do this in a peak right we want to perform adc and get that 266 for 1.3 volts right so let's go and say now um how do we start performing adc we have selected our channel we have uh, set our references how do we start the adc process it says here bit 2 of ad con register looking at bit 2 of ad con register when this bit is set it says adc is in progress it means now setting this bit starts adc for us to start the adc we need to set that ad con 2 bit we need to set it and then this bit it is cleared automatically this bit is automatically cleared by hardware when adc is completed so we are going to set that bit and test if it is cleared we are going to manually set it and then wait for it to be cleared the moment it is cleared it means the adc is completed because that bit will be cleared automatically when adc is completed right so that's basically how we are going to initiate or we're going to start the adc process after doing all of that at the main I want to start ADC. So I'm going to say bit set file AD con zero comma bit two or I can even use its name. What is its name? It's go. You can use the go. So either comma two or comma go. Right? Now this will initiate ADC. ADC. Right? But when will this ADC be completed? When that bit is cleared, because this bit, I only set it, it will be cleared automatically when ADC is complete. So I'm going to say ADC loop, just a label. I'm going to say bit test file. Skip if this file is cleared. Test AD con zero, test that go bit. And then if it is clear, you skip. But as long as it is set, don't skip. Go to ADC loop. Remain in this loop until ADC is completed. Wait for ADC to complete because this bit is going to be cleared automatically when ADC is completed. Wait for ADC to complete by testing that. Once ADC is completed, what does that mean? It means that we have successfully performed ADC and now the results of that ADC, the results are now in the address H and then the address L register. So we do have address H and address L register. Address H is in the bank 0 and address L is in bank 1. So once ADC is completed, the results are automatically placed in that address l and address h uh, register combination and for our case 
we said we are using the right justified meaning address l has the eight bits and address h has the two most significant bits making it a 10 bit result right so address l has the eight bits eight lower bits and the two higher bits are in address h right so we want to ad access address l let's say uh, we neglect the two bits on address h but we want to write whatever the results we got on address l we want to move them to port b we want to read the results we got to address l directly to port b ignoring the two bits in address h you don't really have to ignore them it depends on what the application says but in our case i'm just uh, saying let's ignore that and then read the address l and write it to port b as it is without changing anything so we are going to um, need to access address l right and address l is in bank one address h is in bank zero we want to access address l is in bank one we first have to go to bank one so we're going to say bit set file status are e zero this takes us to bank one this takes us to bank one right and now now that we're in bank one we can read move file address l we can read the whole of address l register but we want to write it to port b and port b is in bank zero so we must switch back to bank zero bit clear file status comma rp zero now that we are in bank zero we can move those results to port b move those results to port b as they are right from there and then let's say we want to keep on repeating this forever go to main at main you are going to initiate adc wait for it to be complete go to bank one read adc results in address l register right so we read the results in the address l register and then we write them to port b write to port b write the value to port b right right the value we read from the address l let's write it to port b right and then repeat forever go back to me now let us build this project or file if we have any errors likely no any errors and then let's then look at simulating this i'm going to go to documents and then uh, I think that is in ADC module. That's why I saved the file. ADC hex start. So you will see there only A0 is an analog input. Only A0 is an analog input. And the analog value there that is being inserted is 0. Hence that 0 is the one displayed on port B. So when I change this, make it 1. Look at what happens to port B. B0 is 1. Make it 2. So if I read 13, I write 13 to port B. That's what's happening. 15 is FF, 0F. So the upper bits are 0, but the lower bits are all, all 1, which is F, which is 15. Now 16 only, B4 is high, the rest are off. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, up until... 255 right we're going to get 255 so whenever you see whenever i change that value for this also updated up until 255 all of these will be one at 255 let me get to 255 at 255 all port b pins it's ff right all port B pins are high. But now, because we are only using the address L 
the address h when the value exceeds 255 because an 8 bit value can hold a maximum of 255 when this value has to go to 256 one goes to the address l and then the remaining so if for 256 you see one is uh, address h is incremented with one and then address l resets to zero 257 we are starting from one again up until 512 at 512 address h will have two and then this will start from zero again until we have up to a value of 1023 right so that's basically the idea of adc but that's not how adc is used this is just an example to get you started with adc in actual fact to use adc you will have a specific analog input which you want to measure and you want to quantify and you want to display or use it in your decision making for example let's look at where you have a temperature sensor an analog temperature sensor as an input to your adc so you will perform the digital the analog to digital converter and then you use the results which will be in the address h and address l you use those results you convert them to a temperature value and then you can display that temperature value or you can decide if you if you are designing an aircon whether to switch on or off depending on the temperature value read from the temperature sensor and the set temperature by the user all right so that's basically how you use the adc right um you can what can we do now let's just say after performing adc i don't know if we should. let's say after performing adc instead of writing the results on address l instead of writing them to port b let's write uh, the two bits okay we can leave writing to port b the address l value but let's use the address h the address h is in bank zero so while i'm in bank zero i can already read the address h but address h what is that i want to do with address h since a0 is my input i want to use a1 and a2 to display the two bits on address h so i'm going to say rotate right no rotate I want to rotate to the left. Rotate left file. Address H save into W. Move W to file. Hot A. Now the address H value is written to R A one and ra2 for me to write it to ra1 and ra2 that's why i had to rotate it to the left because ra0 is already used as an analog input so you read here address h results address h adc results you write the value to ra1 and ra2 you go to bank one you read the address l results you move them to port b so that whole 10 bit will be represented by port b and ra2 and ra3 right so ra2 and ra3 are the two bits on address h and port b has eight bits on address l right so quickly build it and let's see how it works start and currently our analog is zero so we can change it so there it is this will be the case up until 255 right 168 now that is 260 you see at 260 let me go to 255 first at 255 
we have FF on port B. But when we go to 256, port A is going to be incremented, meaning A1 is going to be high, and the rest of these are going to be zero. 256, A1 is 1, and these have started to 2, 0 again. If I increment, they're going to increment again up until they get to FF, and then that is still 1. That will happen at 511. So we increment up until we get to 5, 11. So this is 4 something. 4 something. Almost 5. Now at 5, 11, you see, A1 is still high. And now we have FF on pot B. If we make this 512, pot A has to have 2, meaning A0 will be a1 will be off, A2 will be 1, and then port B will be 0. So if we make this 5, 12, then we have 2 in the in the port A, and then 0, 0 in port B. That is our 10-bit ADC results. Port B starts again from 0 up until we get to 7. I can't remember now. What is that? Mean? Is it... 786 768 okay at 768 see this is 767 that is 2ff if i go above that then it means a2 and a3 must be set if i go to 788 a2 and a3 are set those start at zero again up until i have 1023 where you have both A2 and A3 set and all port B pins also on, giving the maximum. So this is when we have 5 volts on our analog input, it's going to read 1023. When we have 0 volts on our analog input, it's going to read 0 there. So if we have that um, 1.3 volts, we're going to get this 266. That's basically what ADC is. What you do with the results depends on what was the source of the analog and what is it that you want to do with it. Right. On this video, I just wanted to show you how you initialize ADC, how you make use of it, how you start performing ADC, and when you get your results. What you do with your results depends on the application. What is it that you expected to do and what was the source of the analog signal which you were converting to digital all right um i leave it to you now to figure out what is it that you want to do with adc and also maybe add more channels if you want to but if you add more channels you always have to change the value on adcon1 to select different channels that should be easy enough for you uh, to do Okay guys, good luck and enjoy.